It's another MLP week, so I've got a real quick preview for you. This is the second of eight MLP regular season events of the year. This time we're out in Washington, D.C. Two things to note. The seating for the 22-team midseason tournament will be based on the standings following this event. Additionally, there will be the first of four waiver wires after this event. In Premier League, Utah Black Diamonds and the Seattle Pioneers are making their debut, but the Seattle Pioneers actually don't exist anymore. They are now the Carolina Pickleball Club. Now, I've talked about this before. Pickleball Club is just, I don't know, it's boring to me. I think we can do better. I think we should do better. However, it is one less logo that uses a pickleball or a paddle to fill in the negative space in the letter P. D.C., Dallas, New York, St. Louis, and Texas are all playing in their second event, and then not attending this event is Arizona, Columbus, L.A., New Jersey, and Orlando. Now, Arizona, they're pretty lucky to not be at this event because the big man himself, Andre Diascu, has been suspended for 60 days by the UPA because of a foreign substance that was on a paddle that was submitted for testing. Now, this is his statement. He says he would never cheat. He never even intended to use his paddle in competition. It was for a training partner. But the fact of the matter is, he would not have been available had they been at this event. He was fined $50,000, which is pretty crazy. I mean, that'd be like finding an NBA player $10 million. But anyways, don't need to find a replacement for him just yet. Less fortunate are the Texas Ranchers. Christian Alshon is through from the last two PPA tournaments, and it looks like he will not be available for this event. The Ranchers could have tried to get a challenger level player from a team who is not attending this event on loan up to $200,000, but they went with an undrafted player instead, and they selected Kwong Duong. If you're a Premier League team and you lose your left side first round pick, man, it's going to be a tough role to fill. But at the very least here, if they can get one mixed win, a women's double win, and then get to a dream breaker, Kwong's going to give them an excellent opportunity to try to get that extra point. And then, like we said, the Carolina Pickleball Club making their debut, Andre Coop, Jesse Irvin, Colin Johns, and Ben Johns. It can be very interesting to see how this team does. The Johns brothers are far from the untouchable duo that we are used to them being. They, in the past two years, they've won what felt like 80, 90% of all PPA gold medals. And they're just, quite frankly, beatable right now. So we'll see how that translates into the world of MLP. And then the Utah Black Diamonds, who were the massive outlier on draft day. They were the only team that didn't spend any real money in the draft. Then they traded Tyson McGuffin for Jay Villiers. So after updating my charts, they were even more of an outlier. The total draft capital they spent was only 300,000 points. Remember, points aren't even real. So this team will be hungry, looking for a win. I mean, there are a lot of people that have kind of been talking down about them, myself included. So we'll see how it works for them. And here's a quick look at the standings. It's really hard to make sense of these standings. You have teams that have played five matches. You have teams that have played zero matches. So really looking at the points per match is the only way to just make this make any sort of sense at all. Keep in mind these points. You get three points if you win 4-0 or 3-1. You get two points if you win a Dream Breaker. You get one point just for making it to the Dream Breaker. And you get nothing if you lose 1-3 to three or 0-4. to four. The New York Hustlers were the only team to get less than one point per match. Pressure is on them to try to turn that around. St. Louis, of course, is going to want to try to hold on to that top positioning. And for the Texas Ranchers, you just want to try to get as many points as you can this event and hopefully get back to full strength for the rest of the season. We'll take a look at the schedule in a second, but first, let's look at which challenger teams will be participating. This will be the debut for the Chicago Slice, for the Las Vegas Night Owls, and the California Black Bears. Personally, I'm very excited to see the Chicago Slice. Jack Monroe is on this team. In fact, I know firsthand exactly how good Jack Monroe is at pickleball. Go check out that video. We had a ton of fun. He joined us in the backyard, and we got all the real clear stats data just to see exactly how much better than me he is. We had a ton of fun with that. Go check it out after this. Not attending this event are the Hard Eights and the Breakers. So in theory, Texas could have got one of their players on loan up to $200,000. And of course, here are the Challenger League standings, again sorted by points per match, courtesy of Real Clear Stats. Definitely going to be interesting to see where these teams that are making their debut will slot into the standings. Oh, also of note, California Black Bears, DJ Young has a wrist injury. They have subbed in Spencer Smith for him. Now moving on to the schedule. So Thursday, we've got exclusively Challenger League action. And then on Friday, we're mixing in Premier League teams too. And at 10 a.m., a depleted Texas Ranchers against the Utah Black Diamonds. will be eager to prove to everybody, myself included, especially against Texas, that, you know, that they shouldn't just be discounted immediately. The match I'm most excited for on Friday is the Dallas Flash versus Seattle Pioneers, who, again, are actually the Carolina Pickleball Club now. Saturday, again, we've got a full day of Premier League and Challenger League action. I'm actually very excited for this Chicago Slice versus Frisco Pandas match in Challenger League. These are two teams that I think are going to be in the playoffs, and I'm really curious to see how the Slice perform. 
And then on Sunday, of course, we've got a rematch of the controversial Texas Ranchers versus Dallas Flash game that was not even streamed last time, so hopefully we'll get that on stream. And then going on at the same time is my other match to watch, the St. Louis Shock versus the Carolina Pickleball Club, formerly known as Seattle Pioneers. St. Louis, after the first event, is kind of the team to beat right now, and I really think Seattle is going to be a threat as well. Lastly, it wouldn't be MLP if they didn't do a little bit of a rug pull and change the format on us mid-season. They've decided to go away from the true rally scoring, where you can win even when your opponent is serving, to a win-on-serve requirement. This is how they did it in Season 2 of 2023. They will still be playing to 25. Now, look, I did a whole rant in this in my last MLP recap video. I'm a fan of true rally scoring. But at this point, just pick one and stick with it. That's all I ask. I don't know. I'm getting in my whole, I don't want to get in my whole rant again. That's about it. It should be a fun week. It's always a fun week when it's MLP. Anyway, that's all I have for the preview. Trying to keep these short. Let me know if you like these. Like, subscribe, etc. Go check out my video with Jack Monroe. We had a ton of fun with that. We'll probably do a recap. Might get into some other stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Cool. Thanks.